Hey, you, over there. I can see you. Where, you ask? Everywhere, because I can just pull it up from a satellite. Hey gang, Trace here for D News. There was a time when satellite imagery was conspiracy talk, only available to high level government officials or like spies. But thanks to Google Maps and Apple Maps and Bing Maps and MapQuest and the dozens of others out there, we can see satellite images every day for free. Though we just use them to find the nearest Thai restaurant, usually. The process of getting them into your phone though is involved, man. The first reconnaissance or spy satellites were the Corona satellites launched in the 1960s. They had filled cameras on board, and to get that film back to Earth, they ejected it with a parachute and then had to go pick it up. The Air Force would try and snag it right out of the air, or the Navy would sail over once it hit the ocean. These early experiments taught us how to take pictures from a moving satellite of a moving planet while 100 miles up. For example, the lenses on the Corona satellites rotated constantly to keep the shot steady. They even tried angling two different cameras to capture a stereo image. Spy satellites were so good at grabbing images without letting the spies know what was up, the United States and other nations continue to use them. But when Google acquired satellite imaging company Keyhole in 2004, they changed the whole game. Now anyone could look down on the planet and make comments. They still blur sensitive areas as required by world governments, but mostly the images we're seeing are way better than the ones used in the 1960s to determine how to avoid World War III. Today, the actual satellite images are taken by companies like Teleatlas, Digital Globe, EarthSat, Skybox, and others. They're then sold or licensed to governments and companies for geology, mapping, urban planning, shipment tracking. The applications are pretty much endless. This is why some of the images on satellite maps are lower resolution than other images. Each company is working with different equipment, so each camera is going to get a different image. A few months ago, regulators loosened restrictions on US-based Digital Globe, so last week they launched the new Worldview 3 satellite. They're highest resolution sat ever, which means in a few weeks, maps could see images with resolution as high as 25 centimeters. Basically, they'll be able to see a piece of paper that you're holding, but they can't read it. They want to launch satellites with a 10 centimeter resolution. It's about the size of your phone screen. Google says the data on their maps are updated as often as possible, so though they're not live yet, some imagers are as new as two weeks old, and none are older than three years, which means this new high res 25 centimeter imagery might be appearing very soon. Each mapping company is in charge of stitching the images into one giant map, adding the locations of interest, and keeping it pretty regularly updated. But speaking of real-time data, like live data, that stuff is notoriously locked up. Remember, the satellites are moving, the planet is moving. Viewers of live images can only see what the satellite is pointed at during any particular moment, and moving a sat to look at, say, your ex's driveway isn't exactly practical. But a NASA program called EarthCam is letting students get access to real-time space cameras, not via spy satellites, but via a camera right on the International Space Station. Schools around the world are signing up students by the thousands to explore our planet using live images because there's a something about seeing this information in real time, am I right? Students of the Sally Ride Earth Cam program can directly control the camera, taking pictures of Earth and analyzing human geography, geology, ecology, and global change. They even learn about space operations and do flight control simulations. Sign me up! How do you feel about satellites getting more accurate images? Are you freaked out? Are you excited? Go on, let loose in the comments, and keep coming back for more D News seven days a week. And as long as you're in a clicking mood, click on the link in the description to RSVP for our next Space Out on August 27th at 4 p.m. Pacific. Each month, Ian O'Neill and I get together and hang out with experts from NASA JPL to talk space. This month, it's about Europa. Planned robotic missions, possibilities of alien life, and cutting through ice millions of miles away. It is going to be so cool and awesome and whatever. RSVP now so that you don't get lost on the way and thanks for watching.